Hello. In this, my final video uh, on uh, introducing organic synthesis, I'm going to do one additional multi-step synthesis example. Uh, again, to highlight the approach to solving multi-step synthesis problems. Um, but as this is the second video where I'm going to do a multi-step synthesis, I'm not going to spend as much time explaining each step of the process. <clears throat> so. I've set up this uh, example synthesis problem where we're looking to convert ethyl benzene into 2-phenyl acid aldehyde. Uh, one of the things that we want to do uh, is work through that synthesis toolbox. Uh, what do we know this compound can do? What do we know that can make aldehydes? And are we changing the carbon skeleton? I want to do that one first. Uh, because it's going to simplify the problem, and you'll see here in a minute. Uh, ethyl benzene has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight carbon atoms in its structure, and our aldehyde uh, also has eight carbon atoms in its structure. So we're not changing the carbon skeleton. This is important because it eliminates some things we have to think about. In our forward direction, we need to think about uh, what what can ethyl benzene do. Ethyl benzene is a molecule that has an aromatic ring. Aromatic rings have a lot of characteristic reactions, but if you look at uh, the structure of the product, that part of the molecule hasn't changed. So the only part of the molecule we're changing out here is this ethyl group, and we're adding a functional group out here at the end. Uh, we need to figure out how to do that. And if it's not immediately obvious about the types of reactions that ethyl benzene can do going forward, um, maybe we can wait a moment. It'll be okay. Oh. <clears throat> and, and I am going to wait. All right. I want to talk then uh, thinking about going in reverse. So we're going to talk about retro. Retro postmodern. Uh, retro synthesis. Now, you know, how do we make aldehydes? Um, we know some ways to make aldehydes. Like we can make aldehydes by ozonolysis um, of an appropriate alkene. Let me let me show that one. So Again, depending on where you are, you might say, I can make this aldehyde by, sorry, I can make the aldehyde by oxidation of a primary alcohol. Or I might be able to make this aldehyde through uh, hydration of an alkyne. Using the appropriate hydration conditions, which uh, we can talk about if we choose this approach. I want to take this moment here and cross off one of these. One of these is bad. We do not want to do the first one, uh, which requires adding a carbon atom, which we don't need to add. We've already decided that we don't need to change the carbon skeleton. So let's not uh, go through a path that figures out how to add one carbon atom only to remove it. It's not very efficient. So now we're stuck with, with the oxidation pathway or the hydration pathway. And again, depending on where you are and what you know, you might see a way to get to this alcohol. And you might see a way to get to this alkyne. And I'm just going to keep walking backwards for a minute. Um, 
because it might suggest what we want to do going forward. One way we can get to this alcohol is through uh, hydration of an alkene. Another way we can, oops, another way we can get to the alcohol is by a substitution reaction of say a halogen. The only way we can get to the alkyne you know, without changing the number of carbons is to do, you know my structure, is to do some kind of, oops, some kind of double elimination, something that has two leaving groups. I want to go ahead and eliminate another approach. I want to eliminate this one. I'm draw an X through it. Better about that X. I want to eliminate this one because the swap from a halogen to, to an alcohol, while it would work and while we might know how to do it, isn't necessarily an improvement per se over just having the alcohol there. And if we look at how we might make this molecule with the halogen, we would, you know, we would look and say, well, I know how to make it if that halogen is bromine, I know how to make it from the alkene. Oh wait, we, we can get to the alkene sooner uh, than, than this exchange. You're also looking at that dihalide and saying, I know how to make it from the alkene. And then the question becomes, can I make this thing into that alkene? And then we choose which way we want to go forward. So now this follows my process of trying to break down, oops, to a line and not narrow, trying to break down a synthesis problem into simpler steps. Now all we've got to do is figure out how to convert this ethyl benzene into the alkene. And I'm just going to go ahead and suggest to you that this is not a one-step process. You know, making an alkene requires something that has a leaving group. And we could put the leaving group in either of two places, uh, but I wanna put the leaving group here because if the leaving group, you know, it, it, if we're talking about a way that could go straight from ethyl benzene to the leaving group on the other spot, well, that's we, are, we already have a molecule like that, and, and we've decided that maybe we don't want to go that way. Or if we think we know how to get here, well, then let's do that. Um, to get yet, this is kind of where where I think that we want to go. All right, so now I've kind of mapped out all of my pieces. Let's go ahead down here and drop in all of the pieces in the forward direction. And I will do um, both just uh, so that you can see, I'll do both the alcohol version and the alkyne version. I'm going to start with the alkyne version so that you can see that version. I'll do the alcohol version. All right, here we go. So in our first step, we are swapping uh, a carbon-hydrogen bond with carbon-halogen bond. That's radical halogenation. And this position is a special position. It's the benzyl position. Uh, it's resonance stabilized. So actually, we have a, a special halogenating agent, N-bromosuccinamide, that's pretty specific for this kind of resonance stabilized position. Now we want to do uh, an elimination reaction. And I'm always going to pick elimination conditions that look like E2 eliminations. 
because E2 eliminations are concerted, they're easier to control. Uh, E1 elimination conditions compete with the SN1 reaction, and we certainly don't want that. Uh, in this particular case, there's only one possibility. There's no other regio, out, regio outcome, uh, so we don't have to worry about that. Uh, the alkene can uh, react with halogen, and so I'm going to choose chlorine, but bromine would work here to make the vicinal dihalide undergo uh, undergo elimination with excess uh, sodium amide or other appropriate strong base, but sodium amide is commonly used, and followed by aqueous workup to give the terminal alkyne, and then Finally, we're talking uh, to get the hydration at the less substituted position. We're doing, uh, we're going to do hydroboration oxidation. And so that's using some sort of dialkyl borane. You might, uh, you might favor 9-BBN, 9-borobicyclononane, or, or disiamyl boring or, or whatever, uh, whatever your particular favorite uh, dialkyl boring is. There are actually a couple of others out there, followed by oxidation. Right? And so here are the here here are the steps in the alkyne pathway. Yeah, one, two, three, four, five steps. Uh, and I don't have a lot of room down here at the bottom, so I'm going to go back to where the alkyne pathway and the alcohol pathway diverge. And I'm going to delete the alkyne pathway. I'm sorry. Uh, you can go back and pause the video and, and, and take a look at the alkyne pathway. And then get my alcohol pathway. Oops. Well, I don't want to drop it there. Here we go. Put it here. Here is my alcohol, and actually, let's let's bring the alcohol down over here, and, and we'll do my oxidation. Right. So everything up through the alkene is the same, uh, and converting the alkene into the primary alcohol, uh, anti-Markovnikov kind of reaction. This is a, a hydroboration oxidation, very much like we did in the previous uh, reaction, or in the previous synthesis. A um, little bit different reagents, but similar outcome. And then there is a, an oxidizing agent called PCC, pyridinium chlorochromate, that specifically oxidizes primary primary alcohols to aldehydes without over-oxidizing to the uh, carboxylic acid. And now you might recognize and say, well, wait a minute. Um, you know, if I do radical chlorination on my, oops, uh, oops different arrow. On, I apologize, you get the right arrow here. If I do radical halogenation on my original, you know, hydrocarbon, but I use chlorine and, and UV light, shouldn't I get a fair amount of this, which I can convert directly into the alcohol by a substitution reaction? And the answer is yes, but what you don't know, or what you probably don't know right now, is that this reaction pathway is not going to be as efficient. This is not the major product of this reaction, so it's not as efficient. What you also don't know is that chlorine reacts with the aromatic ring itself, so you would want to do a radical halogenation that avoids Cl2. Um, and thus, and, and bromosuccinamide is your, your choice. And sometimes uh, it is actually more efficient to do two high yielding reactions in place of one low yielding reaction. Um, but sometimes you have no other choice. 
this concludes my video uh, on another synthesis example and my series on organic synthesis. Uh, really, I want to summarize one last time the overarching theme of break multi-step. syntheses down into series of single step syntheses. And to remind you to use your synthesis toolbox to help you do uh, to help you do that breakdown. Thank you for watching.